Okay, now we shall now attempt, or at least I will try to attempt to prove to you Green's theorem. Now, I must say that at this point, even though we are really ex exposed to a lot of new material, it's just really scratching the surface of inter integral calculus, factor integral calculus, in particular Green's theorem. There's a lot of extensions, especially when we move on to three-dimensional space, which I don't think I can do that, but I'm just letting you know. So we're going to prove, or at least show a special case of Green's theorem. Okay, and I'm going to prove to you that. Now, Green's theorem says that if we have a curve that is simply close, positively oriented, and piecewise smooth, okay, and then an area D where D consists of the interior of C and C itself, okay, and a certain vector function that has first uh, continuous first partial derivatives on D, we can write the closed loop line integral, okay, of the certain vector function F with respect to DR, where R describes the curve C, is equal to the double integral of D and then the first partial derivative of g dx take away partial f partial y okay and da sorry partial g partial x okay that's green's theorem so how are we going to show show it okay now one way that we can do is that we can rewrite green's theorem okay to really see what what we get now knowing that the vector function f we have the f the the vector component right the, sorry, the, the component function f and the component function g and then dr, if you know, can be written as dxi plus dyj okay? so then after that, rewriting that, we can dot the two it's somewhere in my differential factor calculus, I believe okay? so this one can be writ rewritten as something like this okay? which is the, the closed line integral of the function f, component function f of x and y, bearing in mind that function f and g, okay, that I'm about to write, is still a multivariable function. It, it describes the vector function f, okay, plus the closed line integral of function g, okay, component function g with respect to y, okay. So this is what we can write as the the left hand side of the equation, and we similarly we can also rewrite the right hand side of the equation. Well, what do we get? We get, okay. I will just put an equal here, or oh, sorry, the, the double integral of the partial g, partial x take away partial f, partial y, okay, dA, is equal to the double integral, just simply rewriting it, of partial g, partial x, dA, take away partial, sorry, double integral of partial f, partial y, dA. So we just rewrite it like this, okay? And how the proof goes about is that if we can describe D, the area D in a certain way, because area D is key in evaluating the, part, the double integrals, okay, we can just match up this one with this one over here, okay, and then match up this one with this one over here, and when we add them up, we get Green's theorem. Okay, I mean just bearing in mind the negative sign over here. Now that is one way that we can show and it's the way that we are going to show it because we got the function f and we got the first partial derivative of f. So maybe there's a link between these two and that is what we'll focus on for the proof. Okay, so this is what we are trying to show. Okay, I'll just erase this so to clear some space. Okay, so look, um, continuing what I just said, so we will take a look at the closed loop integral of the function f Okay, where function f is the component function of the vector function, okay, dx is equals to minus the double integral of partial f partial y, okay, um, dA. So this is what this is the first part of the problem. The, the proof reduces to this component, okay? So now here is what we're gonna do. The double integral is there. Okay, double integral is finding areas. Now finding areas, I can split up the double integral into normal integrals, right? Okay, there's this procedure of evaluating double integrals. So one way or the way I'm gonna go about doing it is to see whether I can re-represent the curve C so that I can take integrals normally. I can take normal integrals, okay? So imagine D, okay? D is the area that is we are concerned with. We can describe D in a certain way, okay? Let's just say D is over here, okay? Now, as you can see, that the um, f the d can be any area. So I'll just draw drew an area over there like so. Okay, and then we will go from okay, it would be a and b, where this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. Okay, so now we will just simply um, the left and right boundaries. Okay, s a and b for the curve for the the area d. Okay, and then after that. Okay, I will describe the bottom area as y equals to hx and the top area as, sorry, the, the bottom line as the function y equals to hx and the top line as 
y equals to kx like so. Now, at this point in time, you might be thinking, why would I need to define the, the curve, okay, where this is area D, the curve that encloses area D in two ways? Well, let's just go back to the definition of a function. What's the definition of a function of x in terms of y in terms of x? The definition is that a unique value of x will give a unique value of y, okay? Sorry, any value of x will give a unique value of y, meaning to say that you can't put an x value inside and you get two values of y. So we have to describe this curve in two ways because if we pick a certain value of x, you know, we will get two values, okay? And the, the methods of integration breaks down. We can't do any integration at all. But a way to do the integration is that we describe the curve as, as two curves. The bottom half, y equals to hx, okay? And the top half, y equals to kx. And then now we can do normal integration, okay? And that's what we're gonna do, okay? So, taking the closed loop line integral of function f in terms of xy, bear in mind again that function f is one of the component functions of the, the vector function, okay? dx. Okay, we're going to split that up, okay, taking, now we've got the integral sign, okay, because what we're going to do, we're going to go from this point to this point over here, where direction is important, remember this is the closed loop, closed loop meaning that, you know, direction is important, we need to go positively oriented, okay, so we're going to first go from A to B, okay, taking the integral of this function over here, hx, okay, now, here's the tricky part, okay, see whether you can follow me, we're going to take Okay, hx describes the curve, right? hx describes the curve, and the curve is written y in terms of a certain function hx. However, what are we taking the integral of? We are taking the integral of the function f. Okay, now this you must be very clear on this, you see? hx describes the function okay, of the curve, okay? However, we're taking the integral of f function f, where f is not even a curve. f is, is another function altogether, okay? Remember, f again, I say component function of the vector function we are, we are taking the, the integral of, okay? So what we're going to do is that we are still taking the integral of f, however, x here, but every point of y can be described using this function over here, okay? You see, it's the function, okay, the function f, right, is, is x, it is written in terms of x and y, multivariable function. However, whatever function, or me, whatever value of, of x, okay, we can get the corresponding value of y that is on the curve using this function over here, y equals to hx, okay, so having said that, now I will just substitute hx inside here, okay, and then now since this is a function that is in terms of x, I can integrate it dx in terms of x, that's all. okay, now that's good, now the second one, what's the second one, the second one is now that I need to go from here to here, right, remember, closed loop, Okay, I've already done the bottom part, so now I need to do the top part, okay, which is from here to here. Well, it would be plus, okay, where direction is important, the, the limits of integral would be from B to A. Remember, I'm going from here to here now, so I'm going from B to A. Of the function F, however, now Y is represented by KX. So for whatever value of X, I can get the corresponding value of the Y, y coordinate, okay, so it will be X, it will be KX kx, close bracket, integrate with respect to x. There, there we go, all is fine. Now, using standard methods of integration, which we all should know, I will now reverse the, the limits of the integral, okay, to put a minus here, so I can write a at the bottom, b at the top. Very easy, just changing the limits. I've taken care of the direction, direction is important. Close loop, I've taken the care of the direction over here, because we're going from B to A, just like how I wrote from B to A. So now I'm switching the direction and just integrating the same thing. Okay, and then why do I want to do that? Because now I can write it as one big integral as function f x hx for the bottom curve minus function x kx for the top curve integrating with respect to x. There we go, okay? So, I can now just simply say that this whole thing here on the left hand, left hand side of the equation is equals to integrate a to b function f x h x take away function x k x and integrate with respect to x okay so there we go that's the left hand side now the right hand side 
How are we gonna do about it? Right hand side, let's see.